the last thing we have to do is figure out how to come up with inverse equations though. So if you're given one function, being able to come up with the inverse function. So that's just your equations down here in this last little piece. So when you've got an equation, like instead of a graph, instead of just a list of ordered pairs or x, y values, you're doing the first part that is an inverse. So you're going to switch x and y. That's step one. Then you're just like rearranging. I guess it, we could do solve or rearrange your equation for y. Because, yes, an inverse is the x and y switch, but all of our equations are always y equals. So we don't leave it x equals. We switch the x and y because that's what an inverse is. But then we want to get our equation solved for y. So then when you get that, all we're going to do is write it in inverse notation. That just tells me, tells you that it's an inverse, not the original. And that's really it. So the steps might be like a little different each time, like depending on what kind of terms you have going on. But you switch x and y, you try to solve for y. So for letter A, we've got y equals x plus 5. So you literally just switch it. x becomes y, y becomes x. So x equals y plus 5. And then we're going to try to get the y by itself. Um, so I know we're like used to having the y on the left side and now it's on the right. But the process is still... The same. Like, if we're trying to get this y by itself, we need to move this 5. So, if it's y plus 5, subtract it over. Gone. x minus 5 equals y. You got y by itself. We're just going to write the little negative 1. Just notes that it's the inverse, not the original. That's all. Okay, that one was one step. So for B, switch it, make it x equals 3y minus 5. So all we are doing is switching places with the x and the y. That's it. Y is where the x is, x is where the y is. But then we do want to try to rearrange it, get the equation solved for y. So this time we've got minus 5, so we're going to add that. So we have x plus 5 equals 3y. We don't have y by itself quite yet, so we are going to divide everything by 3, just like you guys do when you're trying to graph. So we've, And we're just going to keep them as separate fractions. That's fine. But you've got the y by itself now. So x over 3 plus 5 thirds equals y. y is by itself. Write the little negative 1 power. Okay. How about about C. I feel like I don't like the way that is. So switch your X and Y. You get a point just for doing that and knowing that that's what an inverse is. Switching places with your Y and your X. X becomes Y. Y becomes X. But now you do want to try to solve it. Again, get the Y by itself. So we need to move the 8 and the 4. So if it's a negative 8, we're going to add that over. So we have x plus 8 equals 4y. Don't have y by itself yet. We have 4y. Divide everything by 4. You can get this to be a decimal. Um, if it divides nicely, like, I guess divide it, it really doesn't matter. It's the same value. So whether you make that plus 2 
or you keep it 8 over 4, um, it does not matter to me. Um, it's fine. Same thing over here. The 5 thirds, if you guys make that, what would that be? 1.6. That's okay. But I'll just keep it a fraction. I am going to put my little negative 1 power, though, to note that it's the inverse. So that's it. You just switch x and y and then rearrange your equation for y. So let's do two more. So d x equals 7y. The only thing you guys have to do is to get rid of that 7 that's multiplying with the y. There's no number being added or subtracted at the end. So the only step is dividing it. So x over 7 equals y. Got y by itself. Negative 1 to note the inverse. And then letter E. X equals negative Y plus 5. So let's minus the 5 over. I don't know why I've got so many 5s happening. X minus 5 equals negative Y. You guys don't have Y by itself. You have a negative Y. So you need to divide everything by negative 1. So, if you want to leave it a fraction, you can. Um, but really, x divided by negative 1 is just, is just x. Negative divided by negative is a positive. Cancels. Leaves you with your y. Put your inverse notation. But if you guys left it as that with the fractions, that's okay. So, we just switch x and y. Like, like I said, you get a point just for knowing, like, that's what it is. The inverse is the x and y switch. But ideally, we want to switch the x and the y um, and then get your equation solved for y because you want a new equation that represents the inverse. And that is all that little negative 1 power is. It's just inverse notation. So when you get it solved for y, just put it to the power of the negative 1. It just tells us it's an inverse, not the original.